I would say we touched on this a little bit, right? The oral cancer screening as being a really, really important component um, to the dental examination. But I would also say pay attention to other risk factors like the smoking and alcohol. Mm -hmm. um, pay attention to whether or not your patients do smoke or, or, or consume large quantities of alcohol because you have an opportunity to educate. Right. Um, so that they can be more aware of the risks related to those behaviors. In addition to paying attention in terms of screening uh, to look for possible early changes in the oral cavity. Welcome to another episode of the Irreplaceable Dental Assistant. And as usual, I have a fantastic guest to share with you. I've known her. We've known each other just about almost all our lives. <laughs> and I can honestly say, good peeps. <laughs> but I'm not going to keep her to myself. I'm introducing you today to Dr. Camille Reagan. Welcome, Camille. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. Well, I know what a blessing you bring today, but just share with our listeners a little bit about who you are and what you bring to the table before we get down into the nitty gritty. All right. Okay. Um, so I am um, obviously Jamaican by birth, but I currently live in the U.S. and I am a professor in the cancer prevention and control program at Fox Chase Cancer Center in Philadelphia. And I'm a cancer researcher. And um, one of the things that um, is really near and dear to my heart is, is really um, focusing my research on cancers in black populations. And one of the cancers that I study very often is head and neck cancer, which I know is going to be the topic of our discussion today. Yes, yes, yes. So what exactly is cancer, Camille? So cancer is sort of a situation where we have cells in our body that seems to lose its control or ability to check growth. And so these are types of cells, normal cells that we typically have all over our body that for some reason, their cycle of growth becomes very deregulated. Mm -hmm. And so they are constantly growing and dividing and growing and dividing. And in that whole process, there are a lot of, there's a lot of damage that occurs within the genome of those cells, which then ultimately results in a, in a non-functional cell. And so cancer really results in this, uh, sometimes it's a mass of, of abnormal cells, sometimes it's uh, single cells that are abnormal, like blood cancers. Um, but the most important thing is that these cells are deregulated, they don't function well, and they tend to invade our organs, and that's when damage occurs. Hmm. So when we're speaking about head and neck cancer now, what, what exactly is it and what are some common risk factors associated with it? So head and neck cancer is actually, um, it, there are actually multiple types of cancers that occur um, in many different sites in what we call the head and neck. And this area in our body we refer to as um, the lips, the mouth, um, the oral cavity, every part of the inside of the mouth, the throat, the tonsils, as well as the larynx, which is the voice box. Oh, so yeah. all of the cancers that are arise in those areas is those are the cancers that are referred to as head and neck cancer. It's a wide range. <laughs> yes, yes, it really is. It's it's a it's a unique um, group of cancers um, compared to the other types of cancers that may arise in other parts of the body. And you asked about risk factors. So there are actually three primary risk factors for head and neck cancer. Two of them work together, and that is tobacco and alcohol abuse. The research shows that tobacco use alone will increase one's risk for head and neck cancer. And similarly, alcohol abuse also by itself can increase someone's risk for head and neck cancer. But when we have both of them in combination, the risk is even astronomical, right? 
And the third risk factor is actually a virus called human papilloma virus, and that's HPV. I know many people perhaps know this virus as the virus that's responsible for causing cancers of the cervix in women. But there are some, a subset of head and neck cancers, those that arise within the tonsils mm -hmm. or the base of the tongue, the oropharynx, which is sort of the back of the throat. Those cancers are primarily caused from HPV infection. Mm. So generally, the traditional cancers are towards the front of the mouth or, or more in the oral cavity. And then the one related to the virus is towards the back, back the throat. Yes and no, right? For the most part, yes. But the cancers that arise in the, in the larynx, which is the voice box, yeah. those cancers are primarily also tobacco and alcohol related, mm -hmm. in addition to the oral, oral cavity cancers. Okay, okay. So we can safely say that lifestyle can directly affect an individual's um, likelihood to get or not get oral cancer in some cases, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. Lifestyle really plays a very important role in someone uh, developing those risk factors for head and neck cancer. Now, I'm going to ask you a question that just came to mind because, you know, everybody is looking for a healthier way <laughs> to smoke. And so we have vaping on the scene and i think it came on the scene because people were looking for a healthier way to smoke do you have any opinion on whether vaping um, may add to the um, one of the causes of cancer or not well, actually, the, 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 the research to date um, really has not identified specifically whether or not vaping can cause cancer. There's, there's not sufficient evidence at this point to really say that. But of course, vaping comes with many other health concerns. Um, but definitely, there has not been any evidence in the literature that suggests that vaping causes cancer. Mm -hmm. Now, what I should say is that it all depends on what you put in 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 it, right? Um, because what the thing that actually increases someone's can risk for cancer is tobacco. And so if there are tobacco related products, perhaps um, in some shape or form that's used in this um, in this means for smoking, then obviously in that context, yes, then they would be at risk for developing cancer. Mm -hmm. So Camille, what are some early signs of head and neck cancer that, you know, our viewers or listeners could be aware of? So interestingly enough, the signs and symptoms for head and neck cancer are quite common and they're actually quite non-specific. So someone might notice that there's a growth in the mouth, pain, especially when eating or swallowing, sometimes excessive bleeding in the mouth. If someone wears dentures and the dentures stop fitting well, or if someone seems to have a mass in the neck, those are some common signs and symptoms, but of course, those symptoms are so common, they, it, they, it, it's not specific, right? So there are many other reasons for us to have bleeding gums or to have pain or to have your dentures not fit. So it doesn't necessarily mean that when someone experiences these symptoms that it is cancer, but what's important is that they need to have, have it checked or they need to have a dentist look at it to, to make sure that there isn't a concern. So I, I would just add a little bit to that. Um, most of our patients are seen twice a year to have a thorough examination done in addition to cleaning and, um, and sometimes x-rays if needed. Because we see our patients every six months even if we're not absolutely sure, something looks different. 
<laughs> yes. That's okay. Maybe you need to check this out. This little spot looks a lot bigger than it looked the last time. Um, we treated your gums for periodontal disease, yet they're still bleeding profusely. We need to check this out. So right. I think that recognizing that there's always a differential diagnosis, meaning that many things could be the cause, you, you begin to um, move things aside based on what you see consistently or haven't seen that you're now seeing for the first time in addition to the medical history. Yes, <laughs> yes, absolutely. And I think that's the key, right? Um, making sure that um, as a clinician that you are paying attention to, to those um, observations with each six month visit. Um, that's, that, that's really um, where we can improve the chances of early detection. Uh, which is really critical for this disease. Um, so making sure that the oral examinations involve an oral cancer screening and looking for, you know, as you've mentioned, uh, unusual um, observations based on the previous visit that, that most often a lot of dentists pick up um, very often these, these potential lesions that could actually develop into head and neck cancer. So I had a patient some years ago who used to decline her exam because she thought, oh, I never find anything. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of money, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately for her, um, one of her colleagues at work got cancer of the throat. Wow. And um, it didn't work out so well. Mm. And, but for my patient, it heightened her awareness of the importance of having, you know, that area checked regularly so that if something looked a little off, it could be identified early because early detection is the key um, in general, but specifically in this area, wouldn't you say, um, Dr. Absolutely. Absolutely. Early detection really is the key. It, it, it certainly is because there's opportunity to, to intervene before it becomes, you know, too advanced and too, you know, too um, aggressive for, for, the, for the real damaging effects that most head and neck cancer patients experience when they have a diagnosis. Right, right. So what are some of the different treatment modalities that are available for head and neck cancer and, and how are they determined based on the stage and location of the tumor? Yes, so there are three primary um, sort of modes of, of therapy. One is obviously surgery. Um, the second is radiotherapy. And the third is chemotherapy. And it really does depend on, as you said, the stage of the tumor. If the tumor tends to be more advanced, um, oftentimes clinicians will choose to um, treat through radiation or chemotherapy first to try to shrink before attempting to um, remove this, the, the, the tumor by surgery. Um, and there are some head and neck cancers that are so advanced that surgery is not even possible. And in those instances, radiation and chemotherapy is the only option. Or um, there are other types of therapies that, uh, that are offered for those very advanced stage um, cancers like immunotherapy, which is actually a, a very expensive, but has been shown to be um, effective in those patients where they have very extremely advanced cancers, um, sometimes metastatic cancers. So that's a, that's a fourth option as well that's often used for those super advanced cases of the disease. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the key is early detection, right? Because the freedom of more options. Yes, absolutely. And especially for those cancers that arise within the oral cavity, surgery really is the primary um, primary mode for treatment. And, and again, it, it does matter based on whether or not it's detected early. Um, obviously, if it's more advanced, then there may be more, um, more likelihood that we, they would have, the, the clinician may have to go beyond surgery and perhaps um, treat with radiation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Well, it's it's always less stressful when there are more options and when something is smaller for right. the <laughs> both for the patient and for the oncologist who is um, given the task of controlling this. Yes. So, absolutely. Dr. Reagan, is there one thing that you wish the dental team um, would absolutely know and do about head and neck cancer? I would say, you know, we touched on this a little bit, right? The oral cancer screening as being a really, really important component um, to the dental examination. But I would also say pay attention to other risk factors like the smoking and alcohol. Mm -hmm. um, pay attention to whether or not your patients do smoke or, or, or consume large quantities of alcohol because you have an opportunity to educate. Right. Um, so that they can be more aware of the risks related to those behaviors, in addition to paying attention in terms of screening um, to look for possible early changes in the oral cavity. Right, right. So as we look at the role that our dental team plays, we would encourage them to ensure that our clients come in very regularly yes. to have their head and neck examination, yes. we would encourage strongly that an oral cancer screening be a routine part of every head and neck examination. Yes. And we would encourage the team to discourage our clients from certain lifestyle habits like the smoking and the drinking. And, um, we would want to make sure that we're so familiar with these clients that we see regularly that even if we're not 100% sure, just seeing something different can trigger us to be the change, right? Make a difference in our clients' lives. So an exam is not just an exam, is not just an exam. Right. Uh, <laughs> it literally can be the difference between life and death, especially if we detect things early. So I always like to leave a quote uh, before we end the podcast. And the one that I'm going to leave with our listeners today is you can be a victim of cancer or a survivor of cancer. It's a mindset. Cancer is not a death sentence anymore. If it's detected early, there's so much that can be done to lessen the likelihood that we're going. it's going to be an end of life experience. We just need to not put our head in the sand and hope that it will go away. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that is so true. I, I will tell you that I've had clients where sent them for a biopsy and they disappeared oh, <laughs> just out of fear you know mm -hmm. so we also have to be encouragers yes yeah absolutely well dr regan i know that you're up to your kazoo <laughs> 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 with your research and your conferences and all that you have on your plates so i just want to tell you a special special thank you but taking time out to just chit chat with us for a little bit today and i have one request what is that <laughs> that you'll come back and share with us at another time i would be happy to do that absolutely <laughs> thank you so much I tell you, I always learn so much from my guests and Dr. Reagan was no exception to the rule. She's reminding us that drinking alcohol and smoking tobacco make us very, very susceptible to oral cancer. And there's a new type of oral cancer brought on by the HPV virus that is primarily found in the back of the throat. 
she underscored the fact that a six month regular dental checkup, including oral cancer screenings, allows for early detection of this cancer. Three modalities of treatment, surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy. And if the lesion is very advanced, immunotherapy may also be used. As a dental team, we have an opportunity to educate patients, encourage regular dental checkups, and discourage lifestyle habits that make our patients more prone to oral cancer. Listen, life is better when we live, learn, and grow together. If you have not subscribed to any one of our platforms, please don't hesitate to do so. And if this information has been beneficial to you, do not hesitate to share. See you the next time.